So thank y'all for coming tonight. I love these nights of worship that we can have, and we just want to spend a few minutes getting focused. Everyone has something to write with and uh, writing stuff. There should be more in the back if you need that. We'll need that in just a couple minutes here. So as we get started, I want you to imagine something with me. Imagine, imagine you're filming one of those like nature documentaries. You know, you ever seen one of those like uh, on Netflix? You've got like the British dude like talking about the sloth like living out of its natural habitat or something. You know, like <laughs> uh, you know, and some of those uh, what's it called? Planet Earth, those things. David Attenborough is always narrating it. And these documentaries, like you know, you follow this life of an animal. I want you to imagine you are filming a gnat. You're filming a gnat, and you have like a small camera that's got like an excellent lens, and you can zoom in, and you're watching this gnat's perspective. And from your camera, you are just zoomed in, so the only thing you can see is what the gnat sees. So you see the gnat's perspective. And he's going out, you know, he's doing his regular gnat things, irritating people, flying in their ears, whatever, you know, whatever a gnat does on his daily basis. And then one day the gnat, he's flying around and you're, you're watching, you're following along, maybe you got a little camera attached to him, I don't know. Um, and you're following along and he flies into a park and he's flying around and flies up near a basketball court. And he's flying up there and if you are, you're watching the perspective of this gnat, and you see the gnat, and he approaches the basketball, and for him, from his perspective, all you can see is this basketball, and it is all encompassing. Like, it appears massive from the gnat's perspective, right? From the gnat's perspective, that covers your whole field of vision, is all you see is this basketball right in front of him. To him, this would look like something so incredibly daunting, right? Like you can just imagine, it's like this meteor flying down from the sky and it's about to hit him. And it's all encompassing and totally covers your field of vision from the gnat. And then Paul's there. And if you were to zoom out and you were to look at the scene from, you know, just from a regular lens, and you were to zoom out and take a bigger perspective, then you would see the whole basketball court, right? You'd say, oh, there's just a couple guys playing basketball. This isn't quite so daunting. It's not quite so menacing, right? Like, there's just two guys playing basketball. The basketball is not threatening at all. It's something that would hurt you. But when you're looking from the perspective of the gnat, it appears so consuming. It covers its entire attention. It's, it's its perspective. And perspective is quite key, right? Like, our perspective on a situation changes the way you see it. When you're looking at the gnat lens, this basketball looks horrible. But when you're looking at our lens, when you zoom out, it's not really that big of a deal. So tonight, what I want us to do, just for a few minutes, is zoom out the camera lens. Is take a little different view, a little different perspective on whatever's going on in your life today for just a few minutes. So... My question as we get started here is, what, what is the basketball in your life? Like, what is that thing that when you're looking that's on your mind right now, that you're thinking about right now, maybe you're partly focused on me, but there's something that could be weighing on the back of your mind. Maybe it's something negative. Maybe it's you have to go back to school tomorrow. Maybe it's a test. Maybe it's a failing grade. Maybe it's someone is sick at home. Maybe it's, I, I don't know what that is for you. Whatever that is, what is it that's on your mind? Or maybe it's not something quite so daunting. Maybe it's something, you know, just a little bit more regular. Maybe it's just that you're thinking about the show that you want to watch when you get home tonight or the game that you want to play. Or you're thinking about why your social media picture from the beach didn't get as many likes as you wanted. Or I don't know. Whatever's on your mind right now, I want to stop for just a minute and I want to take a moment in line with our theme tonight. I want to take a moment and just write down what is on your mind right now? I'm going to give you 60 seconds to write down anything that comes to your mind. Like, it could be, it doesn't have to be anything big. It could be that you're thinking about being a youth night. Write that down. If it comes to your mind, write it down. It could be that you're thinking this is a really stupid exercise. Write that down. It could be you're excited to be here, whatever. You know, just write down whatever comes to your mind, whatever's on your mind right now, write it down. 60 seconds of silence. All right, maybe you have more things. Maybe you can keep going with that for an hour. It's, 
It's actually a really good exercise to do every now and then. Just take a few minutes just to write down what's on your head. It's a super helpful exercise. But now I want you to just take a look at your list. Take a look at what you wrote down. And how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about these things that are, that are consuming your attention right now, that are on your mind? Just, just take a look at your list. And what do you think about that? Are these things that you think will have an impact on your life in one month, in a year, in five years, 10 years? You know, I know for me, often the things that consume my attention are things that aren't really that important. Like I think of, okay, I wanna get a good grade in this class, but I'm not really, it's not really gonna affect me five years from now. I'm not saying grades aren't good, grades are great, yeah, get, get good grades, sure. But if I'm gonna focus so much attention, I, I'm also fine, I'll focus so much attention on something that really isn't gonna matter that much five years from now. Or I'll think about, you know, something that, I'll think about a school assignment, I'll think about a meeting I have coming up in this week, and when I start to bring my perspective out, I start to look at a wider perspective, oftentimes the things that are consuming my mind, I don't know if y'all feel this when you look at your list, but are things that often aren't gonna have a huge impact in my life in even one month's time. So why why would we let these things consume our attention to take us out of this moment, of being right here in this moment, focused on this moment of being here to worship God tonight? And I often find I let other things pull my attention away. I, I, think, of, I think of it like this. Think about when you were a kid. Think about when you were a kid, what things worried you? And what things worried you as a kid? I think, you know, if you're going to get a fair turn at recess on um, that swing that you loved. Or maybe it was if your brother or sister are going to cut that last piece of cake just perfectly so that you get the right size half of it. Like, I always made a huge deal about those even halves when cutting something. And like, these things that worried us when we were kids, they kind of seem laughable now, Right? Like, in our perspective, in that moment, it was such a big deal. But when we zoom out, you take the larger perspective, it's often not that big of a deal. There's this wise teacher in the book of Ecclesiastes, and there's this guy who, who he goes on, and Ecclesiastes is this interesting book. It can be a little bit depressing at times, maybe, if you read it, but I actually think it's pretty stinking awesome. And this teacher, he goes on, and he starts to write, he says that everything is meaningless, Everything is meaningless. He talks about how meaningless things are in life. It's kind of this crazy book. And basically, I think this guy, he's lived a long life, and he's looking back and thinking, all these things that I'm worried about, they're not really that important in the grand scheme of things. And he learned this lesson that I need to stay present here in the moment and not be worried about what's going to come in the future, about what's going to happen next. And also think, when you look at that list, how do you think God views that list? Like, how do you think God views those things in your life that are so weighty to you, that so hold your attention? Do you think any of those things are worrying God? You know, think of the basketball player with the gnat. The gnat, the thing is so, the basketball looks so consuming. It looks like it's going to destroy him. But for the basketball player who's outside of that perspective, that thing, he has control of the basketball. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And we worry about things that take up so much of our attention, things that we're not in control over, when we have a good and loving Father, a good and loving God, Heavenly Father, that cares for us. Jesus says it like this. He says in his famous sermon that, you know, why worry about tomorrow? Tomorrow's going to bring its own problems. If our God, if he cares for the sparrows, if he cares for the lilies in the field, then he's certainly going to care for you. So we don't need to worry about what's coming, about what's coming next, because we have a God that's going to take care of us as a bigger perspective of what's going on. And I'm not saying that any of those problems are going to disappear. They're probably not. 
Maybe they're good, but they're probably not. But what I am saying is that we have a good, loving God that we follow, and we don't have to worry about it. We can just be here in this moment. Jesus has an invitation that he says in Matthew chapter 11. And this is probably a verse that you may have heard before. I don't know how much you've thought about this in the past, though. And Jesus says this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. And Jesus invites you to take whatever you have, whatever might be worrying you, whatever might be weighing on your mind, whatever is just consuming your attention. It might just be TikTok. It may not be a worry. But he invites you to lay that down and to come to him and find rest. I want to read that again in a different translation. This, this is called the message translation. This translation of the Bible, it's actually a paraphrase. It's what one guy, you know, read Jesus' words, and then he reset it in his own words. So it's a little different, but I think it really helped me to get, get, get me thinking about this. He says this. I'm going to read this slowly. I want you to just think about this. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I will show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unenforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Do you want to answer that call? To live freely and lightly. To take on Jesus' yoga. It's, it's light and easy to carry. To follow Jesus. To embrace that life of being a disciple of Jesus. And it's not that following Jesus is always going to be easy. Of course, there's going to be hard moments in it. But Jesus is saying, come to me. You have a heavenly father that cares for you. You don't need to worry about tomorrow. You don't need to worry about what you wrote down. He's saying, come to me. Enjoy this moment here with Jesus. So we're about to go into another time of worship. But in the first act of worship that we're going to do communally is we're going to take communion. We're going to take the juice and the bread together as this reminder of Jesus, as this reminder of the sacrifice that he, gave, that he, uh, that he made for us. As a reminder of how he invited us to come and, and to come to him. Because his burden is light. So we're going to take communion together. And then we're going to listen to this song that's called Take a Moment. And the song just says, take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. Take a moment. So tonight, slow down. Put those worries aside. Crumble that up if you need to. Keep writing on that paper if you need to. Whatever. Put it, put it all aside. And let's take a moment to remember who God is and who we are. So when you're ready, I invite you to go and take communion. And then come on back in here and just spend a few minutes in just reflection. And the praise team is going to come on up here and lead us in worship. God will provide. Jara means God will provide. The Lord will provide. And that's for forward thinking. Yes, he has provided. He provided his son. He gives us grace. But he will continue to provide. When we face those trials, he's always there. So some of the words of this, forever enough, always enough, more than enough, he's all we need. When you feel like you're alone, you're overwhelmed, you're stressed out, we've got Jagger. He's always going to provide. He always will continue to provide. So let's sing this out.
wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to lend you. It doesn't take a trophy to make you cry. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the waves to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. You are Oh, yeah. 
to life. This is great news. If this is not your story, that's not yet your testimony, what we just sang about, like you don't have that peace, that confidence, I hope that what you'll do is you'll find someone. I would love to encourage you to find one of your small group leaders here in the back, or find your small group leader and talk with them. If there's something that's causing you to struggle, something that uh, is just causing you to not be at peace, I would highly encourage you to not let another day go by, that you have a conversation with someone who will just love you, listen to you, and pray with you, and that's that's a next step for, for someone in here. I'm, I'm 
certain. Um, for all of us, I hope you'll come back next week, because whatever the state of your heart is, we all have ways that we can slow down, take a moment, pay more attention to what God is doing in the world, the goodness of God. And if you believe in the goodness of God, like you know it, you've experienced it, you've been blessed by it, then we also know what we do as we go out of here. We don't go out as perfect people, but we go out as people who experience that goodness and go share it with the world. Go spread his goodness throughout the world tomorrow, wherever you are. Do it tonight. Don't wait. That's what we're, that's what we do. We are people following Jesus and we go spread his goodness throughout the world. So thank you all for coming and being, uh, you know, being a part of this. Thank you guys for leading and uh, it sounded great. You guys sounded great.